Hey guys, today I'm going to head down to Corey's house, going to help out in the fish room again. I think we're going to be putting in his 240 gallon aquarium that he just picked up. Should be a lot of fun, stay tuned and uh, see what kind of trouble we get into. Room, and uh, we have this wall here that we're going to clean out. Corey's working on emptying this tank here. We're going to move the 240 over here and uh, I'm going to give him a hand. So, yeah, so move, move that this. power head in a little more. There we go. Let's get the last of the water out. This is a definitely don't do what you're seeing here. You could totally break a tank or your back, but you know, that's this is what I do to get things done fast. And I don't want to drain all the water by hand. So goodbye. Mika Splendens tank, old turtle tank, and uh, you know, but I think it's a good trade. We're trading a 55 for a 240 gallon, so you know, that's gonna be fun. Pretty good trade off, I'd say. All right, so we got the tank empty here, and we found some shrimp. I think they're Malawa shrimp. I think that's what was in this tank for a long time ago. They made it through turtles and uh, the goodies, so now he's gotta scoop them up, get them in some water, and and Bob can take them home and figure out what he wants to do with them. Awesome. That's how you make me sweat right there. Whew. It's looking good. We're gonna go get some lunch. And uh, I just gotta show, we, you saw a struggle moving everything and Corey goes to clean out his car and he finds a furniture dolly. Would have been way easier. <laughs> <laughs> but we're off to get lunch now. <laughs> we're gonna watch Corey drill this tank. I give myself enough room yet? Not yet. I'm gonna move the stand too, because otherwise it's gonna fall down here. Do as I say, not as I do here. I'm gonna bring this light back, I think, to make me able to drill. This is one of those things you should really measure, but I always eyeball it. You've probably done it enough to. I've done it a lot. What I do know is this. You want to drill much lower than you want, and then you can put a standpipe in. But if I put this in real close to the top, and it doesn't fit correctly once you put an elbow on it, you're screwed forever. So if I go down lower, put an elbow in and a little bit of riser, I can adjust that level anytime I want. Also, when I get fed up with this tank in about 10 minutes, we can turn it into a rad turtle tank like it's nothing. So, <laughs> all right. So. Um, if you want to come over here, whatever you want to do, you can be It's right. too dark on that side. Is it too dark? Yeah, this way I get the light. All right. I so can just zoom in. Kind of one of the things you want to make sure when you're going to drill is, let me get this here. You want to make sure you don't put it like way too up at the top, then you can't screw the nut onto it. Like that means that's a hole in your tank that ruins it forever. So another reason to go down low. And I kind of like to eyeball it with the nut as opposed to just going, yeah, I think that's going to work because this is going to really simulate where it's going to go. I'm going to put it in this top corner over, well, not top corner, but the corner over here and away from the wall enough that I could spin the, the elbow. So the reason why I want to make it so I can spin this elbow that's going to go inside is if I want to do a water change, let's say I have an elbow in there and a standpipe, if I can spin the elbow, it would drain water to here. And so if I put it like, I guess I can always spin this way too. Um, but I'll probably put it, where am I gonna put it? I'll probably put it like right here. And so 
you can kind of make a little mark sometimes with your drill bit, but a lot of times you just move that out of the way. Oh, it did make a mark, so. Um, now the trick is you kind of just hold the tank and you drill slowly and then you try not to melt the drill bit into it. That's the hardest part here. I'm trying to figure out how I can light it up and hold it. That'll work. So you got to get the drill bit to go in first and when this hits it's going to be the worst sound ever like you just exploded this tank and because we're filming it it will explode and it'll be horrible after I just said I was going to do that. But So you're going to get all these little scraps coming off there. Eventually this is going to kind of bust through and it's going to grab really hard. Now if you're super duper paranoid you can do it in reverse but that makes for a 30 minute like drilling. It's going to take so long. So I never do it that way. I'm, I'm always pressed for time. And I'm pressing pretty hard right now because otherwise it will take forever. Oh, come on. Oh, what is going on here? <laughs> so it's, you know, part of it's th thick acrylic. That's part of the problem. It's in there. Like, there's no doubt this goes in. But it's, any second it's going to punch through. And it's going to, you're going to watch my hand just go, Urgh! and it's going to, that's the scariest part. So. I can feel it. It's almost through. Why does my drill keep loosening up when... Oh, because it's grabbing it. It's melting. That's that melting problem I'm talking about. Is This bit gets really hot and it melts it in there. But we're almost through. I can feel it. There we go. So luckily I was going slow there. When you're going fast, it really jerks. So now we're through. Now I could take forever and go backwards and it literally might take an hour and it's going to melt a lot. But instead, we're going to try to go through it relatively quickly, and it's going to smell like glue. This is tight, right? Yeah, okay. Here's a little pro tip that I never do, by the way. If you wanted a super duper clean hole, I would actually take this out and drill it the other way now that I'm halfway through. Because right now it's gonna get a little bit of chip out on the way through, but we're gonna put a bulkhead over it anyway, and I don't care. That being said, you should probably not do what I did and stop right here, because I just melted this thing into place, so I'm gonna have to get it loose again. Yeah, so don't do that. That was a bad idea. There we go, I got it loose. I'm gonna finish it now. There we go. So if you look back through here, you can see where I stopped actually, and that's why it's a little bit more coarse right there, but this is half inch thick acrylic, and uh, that's why it took so long, and the hole itself is pretty hot, but clean, went through. I haven't looked at the other side, but I think it's you know relatively chip free on this side. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it came through well, I would say. So now, you know, there's shavings everywhere, but all we gotta do is feed this through here. You always want the bulkhead on the inside because that's what's gonna keep it so that uh, water can't get by this. And we're just gonna put that nut on there. And now we can go through. You know, I gotta tighten it up a bit. So whenever you're tightening up a bulkhead, you wanna go what's called finger tight or hand tight and then another half turn. If you go like two or three turns, it's gonna compress that gasket so much that it starts squeezing out. And it'll actually, sometimes you'll, you'll crank on this so hard, it'll turn the entire thing and tear your gasket. And you'll have to redo the whole thing. You won't notice it until you fill it up with water and it's dribbling water. So you only wanna go a half turn after it's hand tight. Now I gotta find tools. And normally that tool sat right here on this bench, but who knows where it is, so I gotta find it. Um, measure. So we're just installing the overflow here. Okay, the measure to get it down there. It's got to be at least probably 30 inches. Uh, 
what? That makes sense because it's 20, 24 inch tall tank. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's, I think that's smart. Yeah, I want to go down a bit. It's probably easier to do that with the front, but. Always dry fit first. Don't glue in first. Dry fit, then go back and glue. Same. You guys use a lot of PVC. <laughs> oh man, that's not optimal at all. So part of the problem is I got this plug-in right here where this bolt pin is. Like, if I was smarter, I would have measured better. Do we gotta slide the tank? I mean, probably makes sense to do that. Just slide the tank, probably three inches that way because I can get it in there but it's constantly going to be one of those things that's like oh man wish I had a you know like I can put it in I just bet you I wish that was two inches that way so let's yeah what's a couple inches let's move it a couple inches yeah you can watch me grunt <laughs> that's probably enough right there now we just got to set our shims and uh, measure it in. Always a battle here. We'll measure on that side. Now I always like to leave a gap so I can put hang on back filters and things like that because we're never moving this tank again once it's got water and sand in it. Until we move it to my house. That could happen, yeah. That could happen, so. In five years. I, yeah, I'd be amazed if I don't move on to something else in five years. So now I gotta find elbows. I, I don't have any elbows, so this is this is the point where I hope it's not the hardware store trip that I always have to take every time I build something. Oh, that's not the right elbow. Dang it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna look at these amazing Cipacromas. These guys are always flashing, the males. You see them dancing, always dancing. That's why I love this fish. Look at that, pretty sweet. Thank you, pre-planning. <laughs> I bought extras, I always do, and I've got four more. That'll do this project. So now I gotta come like this. And, and then we gotta cut again while we're down there. Really, I could almost not filter. I was like, I put a filter sock here, but it's not a filter, so it just needs to come in. That's all. Well, That's you good. could always put a filter sock there. You never can have too much filtration. <laughs> Keep it nice and clean in there with a filter sock. Yeah, but then... Then you can put a light on there and grow some plants. That's right, two tanks with rice water. All right, so that, that gets my water down to here. That sounds like a win. I can glue this up. Oh, I need... Yeah, I need... Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna glue that down. I feel like there's a lot of wasted space on this side. Like something should be under there. Yeah. I, I don't know what, but. I don't know, like the giant filter that needs to go there? Oh, yeah, I guess There's so. that. <laughs> I'm excited for that thing. That thing's huge, I've never used one. I got that from Eheim, I've been sitting on it for like six months. How is that, like two feet tall? It's big, That's, I'm, I'm a little worried it's gonna fit, actually. Well, maybe I'll start unpacking this.
issue and there's really nowhere to put the spray bar. So we're going to drill a hole right here because we really don't want the spray bar up here, you know, eight inches. It's got to be back here against the wall. So we're going to grab a bit and make another hole and then get this puppy installed. Oh man, this is rough. <laughs> where, where, where you want? Right here? I think, yeah. I mean, because that gives me a little bit of play. I think if we do it there. There? Let's see. So that would be as tight as it goes. Let's say I wanted to drop right here. So yeah, right about there. And then we want it like close. So maybe you put your finger like right there and we'll try drilling that and we'll ruin this. And then that can be the end, end of the video. So yeah. And that should be okay. Oh man, that's a bad idea. All right, put your finger back there. I want to get a, a step stool. Because I won't be able to put any pressure the way it is right now. Got it. Sneaking in some fish shots. Kind of cool. You can watch it go through. That's hot. Yeah, I got that on the other hole. Watching it. Yeah. You can see it getting closer and closer. All right. So now, let's see if that was awesome, or I just put another hole for no reason, because that would suck. So, just gonna be able to cut this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this right now, because this is yeah. abnormally. There's scissors over that. I actually own a tool just to do this, but it's in the other room and I never <laughs> ever go grab it. I'm gonna cut this a little long. And we can always turn it back down. <laughs> it's like I've done this before! Oh man! <laughs> Perfect. It's gonna work. I like it. Now I just hope it's not a little too tight where it's gonna like, water's gonna turn into like rattle or something, but I don't think it'll, I think it'll be fine. Perfect. Yeah. Back to work. So I think the problem is it's gonna sit too low because I wanna run a sponge on the intake of this thing. And so I won't be able to get a sponge on and off. I probably need to shorten it to like here. So that's probably, if I measure that, about, oh, come on. Probably like, I need to take a solid three or four inches off. So we're going to try that on a chop saw. This thing could shatter into a million pieces. I, I fully believe that could happen. I'd say a solid three inches. Let's try it and uh, hope that it doesn't shatter. I'm going to watch you shatter it. Yeah, it's, it's worth watching. Don't know where my safety glasses are. I caught lots of grief last time I was on the chop saw, so I'm just gonna look away, which is even worse <laughs> idea. But I don't know where any safety glasses are to so move stuff around, so. so I need to take off three inches. Which be right there. Oh, don't shatter, that would be horrible. Safety first. <laughs> yep, it's like welding, just don't look at it, right? <laughs> just... Sounds okay. Oh, no, no! Don't lift it. 
<laughs> I think that's gonna work. That wasn't so bad. It's probably worth like four dollars right here. <laughs> right? Any uh, blue heron sightings? Not lately. I think it's too cold. I don't know if they go somewhere, but they haven't been around. I think you got it with the pellet gun, but you don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. All right, let's see how this thing looks now. Whoa, I almost died. Perfect. Even with a couple inches of substrate? Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, you're right. We're gonna put... I gotta get the... I gotta get a, a sponge now. Now I gotta test it, because... <laughs> let me grab one, I gotta cycle one over here. We're getting close. This thing is bigger than a five gallon bucket. It's a massive pump. Oh, so, do they even make this pump or, or uh, canister anymore? You can buy it on Amazon. You know, we'll, we'll put a link down below. I think it's like 500 bucks. And, you know, I do love the reputation of Eheim, and I've loved every Eheim product I basically have ever used. I just don't know if it's worth two hundred dollars more than an FX6. So yeah. That's what I'm gonna learn, you know. But you know, I do like Eheim products. There's no doubt about that. I want to know when you're getting the FX4. I've got them in the store. Do you? Yeah. I thought you said on video you hadn't got them yet. That was whatever that video was. That video oh. was probably a month and a half ago. I've got them. I just assumed you would put it on a video when you got them. Well, the problem is they didn't get mine to me until everyone had already done a video, like Keith Tropicals and Dustin's Fish Tank stuff, and I was like, well, why put out one now if I'm the last guy to have one? So I just, I didn't pull one out. I mean, I could. Just like that. I think it's going to work. You want a couple inches of substrate? I can make that work. Should be good. This thing, I'm not, I'm not impressed by this whole... I mean, the hose is going to if I don't do it, so I gotta do it that way. But yeah, I'm gonna get my tool this time though. I got my tool. For some reason, it is just really dark in this corner. What's that? It's super dark in that corner. I don't know why. It's weird. These are some crazy German engineering hose clamps, though. It's got a screw in the end of it, and it kind of just... I don't even... Magic is how it happens, I'm pretty sure. All right, so, oh no, it, it fell off the screen. Can't get to it. <laughs> I had it being held by the cord and then removed the, I, I don't know if you did or I did, but. Like, like this, I would bet. Well, <laughs> oh, that's how you do that. <laughs> That'll slide on easier. Oh, God. Oh. This has to be heated up. There's no way this is going on here. Look at this. That's, and that's the bigger one? This is the bigger one. That's gotta be heated up, right? Yeah. I'm not even sure. Yeah, that's, I don't have any chance of heating it up, but even still. Yeah, I gotta go buy water. 
That's all I can do. I'm taking a sneak peek at these mini musk turtles because I think they're pretty rad. He's checking me out as much as I'm checking him out. Turtles, man, they got a maid. That's the life for me. Swim around, lay in the sun. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> it looks so funny. All right, back to work. All right. Yeah. So in case anybody didn't know, obviously when you heat up the hose, it just makes it a little bit more viable and you can expand it. Don't burn yourself. And you can make it too pliable as well, like if it's, you can't get it on there either, so it's a kind of an art of like, you want it pliable, but not so much that you can, ow, boiling water's hot, <laughs> FYI. Uh, you want it pliable enough so that it'll get over there, but when you go to push on, it doesn't just go, so that's an official sound, by the way. TM, trademark. Yeah. I had a scary moment. I was like, no, how many energy's on? Still goes on. Life's gonna be okay. Try this. <laughs> this is the craziest those clamp I've ever seen. Another tip, by the way. I crack these things by going too tight on them. So don't do that. Well, especially as it cools down, it'll shrink back up, so. Now, I gotta get down there, grab that thing, and then I gotta get this one on there. Uh, all right. So now, I'm gonna, now I have to put this one on. Well, I wouldn't have to, but it's best if I put that on now. Get hot water closer to that too. Let's see if I can pull this off one more time. By the way, it's also I cut myself all the time. It'll slip. And this, even though it's rubber, is sharp enough to like cut your skin right open. I've done it a million times and it's the worst feeling ever. Just an FYI. You don't cut yourself. Yeah, I've already, well, now that I've been using water, but I already cut myself pretty good earlier. This is some German engineering right here. This is magical. Anywhere. Yeah. Now we just gotta get this on to the intake of that. Here's the roll back from the hardware store. Almost done. Almost done, he says. Way to jinx it. <laughs> wow. Gonna have to go back to the hardware store because we're at. We're slightly further than where we where we were. That's the correct thing to say. 
Both clamps. Can't live without them. You gotta watch my Quick Tip Tuesday about buying hose clamps in bulk. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's a real riveting video. <laughs> we had to run to the hardware store purely for this Elmo. Yep, I'm just making sure it's gonna be what I want to do, hopefully. Of course, I picked like the tightest clamp that could possibly fit on this thing. It's gonna like clamp without. Uh, I don't want to get a bigger one. There, there. There's one side. Now, where's the genius? It's not me. I need more tubing. Oh, yeah. I got it. I got it. Where'd it go? In the bucket. So, yeah. I feel like this is extra. <laughs> I was just thinking like, where are they one of those? And I was like, wait, this has a thing for it already. So, let's see, we're gonna come up, I gotta come up a little bit, small piece. Probably like that. I just want to point out what Bob did in my bucket here. Something <laughs> <laughs> happened to that bucket, just say it. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a shaper. <laughs> someone may have sat on that. And it wasn't me, but someone else is here. Alright, so that's on there. Now, uh, let's see if I just. This is the angle I hate the most, and I have to do it in fish keeping all the time, so I had to do it in the sump over there. Like, you're going down, and then you're trying to use strength, and it's, uh, I always end up like pinching a nerve. And yet I never change the way I do it. Get out of there. All right. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing here. This is coming <laughs> together pretty good. Back that off onto there. All right. Now, I think we're gonna put sand and uh, wait for more water, 240 gallons, takes a little bit. We've got about, I don't know, maybe 100. You can really see how my floor is sloped here because they're only like this here. I bet you if I measure it, we're, I don't know, I'll pretend to know where a measuring tape would be, I don't know. But I know it's sloped, I can see it, but we'll see how bad it goes. I get fired because I didn't put the top on before he connected it. This whole thing's got to come out. You see what you're doing to me here? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> come on. This is a train wreck. <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> I brought you a nice lunch today. I did get some beef brisket. This, this non-functioning top that does nothing. Oh, non-functioning, <laughs> you mean the coolest part of my build. Can it only go one way? I thought for sure it worked that way, so I made it harder on myself. I thought, ow. I didn't have to take it off, I could have spun it. That was, that was You know, it doesn't say Eheim without this on there. I mean, that's half... That's but like that adding, doesn't even say Eheim on it. Barely. Right here. It's like adding stickers to your car. It adds horsepower. <laughs> if it doesn't say Eheim, you gotta get this to go in there. Oh. Why does this line up? You have to line it up. To, you have to line it up before you put these things on? I sure hope not. Cause like it's, it's like it's off center by a little bit. Like here's the cord. 
Like the cord's supposed to go right there. It's just like, and you can see like how far that was right here. Like what the heck's going on? There we go. It's just working kind of. Man, this thing's really steam fogged up, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, I think that worked. Look at that. It looks way better now. Easier. Easier that way. Oh, those connects are so quick. Now we do sing. <laughs> Finished up the 240. As you can see, we got it full of water, and I uh, got some on the floor, as you probably see. But that should be drying up. Corey's looking for suggestions on what to put in here. Made up your mind yet? I want to do something crazy. I don't even know what it is yet, but like some crazy species thing that no one does. I just can't think of it yet. Like 240 gallon clown goby cichlid only, you know, or just something <laughs> that no one does. But I can't think of anything that I, I, I should do a pea puffer tank. Nothing but pea puffers. Reef tank. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad sorry I put the crushed coral in here, you know. Okay, we're all set. Get the nitrate factory started. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this more in-depth, kind of behind-the-scenes look at setting this thing up. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you later. Definitely enjoy the long form. Mine's going to be a real short video, so. <laughs> all right, guys.